Hey there. Thanks for tuning in. You ready for another episode of my Bigfoot sighting? All right then. Let's do this. Seen a bunch of run-down new horse towns where the church is the backbone, loves in the bow. And the five-string melodies groove in. With the farmland rows where the roots run deep. Beyond the noise of the busy streets. Where the songs of the south are soothing. When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out. I don't run from banjo music. Yeah. My Bigfoot sighting happened in the Sam Houston National Forest. It was the year 2020, and I had always watched a lot of the Bigfoot shows on TV and stuff and was very interested in the subject. So... One day I got a wild hair and I decided to make a Facebook group with a post. My Facebook group is East Texas Bigfoot Research Organization. And I made a post asking about sightings in the area. I had heard a lot about Sam Houston National Forest and uh, I got a lot of response to it. I actually was very surprised. I got about 150 comments about it and I went through all of that and asked about the best places and stuff and finally came up that uh, I was going to make a trip to the Kelly's Pond area in the Sam Houston Forest. A lot of people said they would like to go. Being Facebook and knowing people, I knew 140 people weren't going to show up. But anyway, a couple of guys from Tyler came down. Josh and Buck, and then uh, another couple of people from other part of East Texas came, Bobby and his son, and we met at Kelly's Pond. Now, in June of 2020, there had been a very wet spring with hurricanes, so the four-wheeler trails and that sort were closed to traffic, so we weren't worried about any of that. However, there was some logging going on north of the camp, which kind of disturbed us a little bit. But we looked around, we found some trails, we followed a few trails, and uh, that's about the extent of what we did that afternoon. Now, again, keep in mind, this is June in southeast Texas, so it's very hot and humid. That night, after dark, Bobby's son and myself walked a couple of trails. But we did not experience much of anything. At one point, we thought we smelled something. You know, everybody describes the smell as a wet dog, skunk type thing. And it it was kind of that smell, but it just kind of came and went. Like uh, maybe it was wafting in on the air from somewhere else. But anyway, we walked the trail down to a pipeline area that was going through the forest at that point uh we decided to make a few calls so when i did an owl call we heard some coyotes start up way off in the distance and then right at the end of the coyote howls there was a different howl but it was way off and that was all we heard we didn't hear anything else even after we tried again so we made our way back to camp Well, that night was uneventful, other than some people coming into camp disturbing us. So the next morning, Bobby's back was hurting. So he and his son packed up and left, which left myself and Josh and Buck at the camp. Well, some more people came into the camp to stay, you know, being a Friday weekend coming up and so on. And we decided, look, I don't think this is the best place to be. So I had to get some ice for my ice chest. So I told them, I said, look, y'all can take a nap, whatever you want to do. I'm going to drive some roads and check some places out and get some ice and come back. So I did that. I was gone 
better part of the afternoon. And uh, I found a couple of places that looked a lot more secluded. So when I got back, we decided we were going to go to one of them. So we left Kelly's Pond area, and we crossed the main highway that, that goes through the forest and went up to the north end. If you're not familiar with the area, on the very north end of Lake Conroe, which is where Sam Houston National Forest is located, there's a campground called Stubblefield Lake Campground. So we were up in that area. We weren't at the campground, but we were west of it by several miles, I, I would say. And in the forest, when they close roads, they have the iron pipe gates across them and stuff like that. So what we did is we found a place that seemed secluded. We had not seen any people. We pulled off the road and made a makeshift camp right there at the beginning of that old fire road, I guess, old logging road, whatever it was, that had the pipe gate across it. We set everything up, and then we walked down that road quite a ways. Didn't really see anything, so we went back to camp and waited. Now, there was another gentleman coming who had uh, run late. He had a lot of things to do and couldn't get there the day before. So his name was Matt and his wife, and we were waiting on them. We actually ended up waiting and waiting until it got dark i don't know if they were lost or just running behind or what but they didn't actually get there until probably almost 10 o'clock at night so matt is actually another uh, podcaster and he brought a bunch of equipment and we were set up we had listening equipment and all kinds of stuff and we were sitting there talking getting to know each other and just kind of piddling around and finally made a couple of calls and uh, would knock and stuff like that. You know, nothing really major happening or anything. We had not seen or heard much of anything. At one point, uh, Matt's wife was running the uh, bionic ear and she said she heard something off in the distance, but that was about it. So I guess it was maybe 12.30, 1 o'clock at night. And we decided, okay, it's time to go out and do something. So where we were, there was a pipeline that crossed the road that we drove in on. But the road that we were walking on did not cross it. So we decided to split up. Matt and his wife walked down to the pipeline because he had some thermal and night vision equipment and he was going to watch the pipeline. Josh walked back down the road to where the hiking trail crossed the road. It was about a quarter of a mile back down. And myself and Buck decided to walk down the old logging road behind the pipe gate. We had walkie-talkies. No one had seen anything or anything. Uh, Buck and I were walking down the road, which, you know, we're in the National Forest. Everything's wooded. Uh, it's kind of rolling a little bit. There was a couple of small hills up and down, and the road curves around several places. You know, typical forest trail, I guess you would say. And we were walking down the road, and we were about a quarter of a mile in from the main road where our campsite was. And I told Buck, I said, look, is that another pipe gate? Because I thought I saw something reflecting. You know, when they close those pipe gates, they have reflectors on them so people can see them. And uh, he had a little handheld four-inch flashlight. I had a pretty good headlamp. And it was reflecting in, in the light that we had from the headlamp and the flashlight. And I thought, well, why would they have another gate down there? 
And so we kept walking toward it, and we got closer and said, that's eye shine. And we're standing there looking, trying to figure things out. And, you know, Buck said, well, that's got to be a raccoon or something. I said, no, the eyes are too big. They're set too far apart. And raccoons don't shine like a flashlight because what we were seeing, if you look at it straight on and the, it looked at you with both eyes, it was looking like somebody was holding two little flashlights up there. That's how the reflection was. And we kept standing there talking about it. And, you know, they're, they're like maybe 100, 150 yards away. So we keep walking down the road, kind of keeping an eye on them, keeping them in the light for the reflection. And he said, well, it's too low to the ground to be a Bigfoot or anything. And I said, well, maybe they're sitting down. And we kept walking and talking, walking and talking. And the two Bigfoots that we were seeing eye shine from were still there. They didn't run off. They didn't do anything at all. And finally, I kind of walked off the road and toward the woods a little bit toward them. And I took my camera. I took a picture of the eye shine. It's not a very good picture. And I hadn't really shown it to anybody in any fashion because it wasn't that good. But at that point, I guess they got tired of us. And the one stood up. And when he stood up, my headlamp had enough light on him that I could see from the waist down. And what I saw was a human shaped leg, like from the hip to the thigh to the knee down to the foot. And it was covered with reddish brown hair or fur, whatever you want to call it. And it stood up and started walking off on two feet. And we followed, when it was walking off, we were following the eye shine because as it was walking, it was looking at us. But as we were doing that, the other one had kind of faded off to the other direction. And uh, I'm thinking now we should have split up and tried to follow both of them. But anyway, the one that got up and stood and walked off that we followed. Eventually it started down a hill and turned away from us. Of course, we couldn't see the eye shine. It was too far for the headlamp. So it was kind of lost in the darkness. At that point in time, Matt out on the uh, pipeline said he had seen something step out on the pipeline and then step back. And we're thinking that that might have been the other one that had been standing there. So at that point, and we had talked on the walkies. I, when we saw them, we told the other guys, we got eye shine. We got eye shine. Josh had come back from the trail and walked up to us. About the time that he walked up to us, we heard a really strange sound. It's, I've heard somebody call it a bionic bird. We're figuring it some kind of communication that one of the uh, Bigfoots or Sasquatches or wood boogers, whatever y'all want to call them, made to its companion or whatever. And at that point, everybody just kind of headed back to camp and we talked about it a little bit. And for some reason, everybody wanted to leave. So they all left. I was going to stay, but I decided that with them in the area, I was the first time I've ever been out, never done anything like that. I decided I wasn't going to stay either. So we all left. So that was basically that first sighting. Now, again, that's the first time I've ever done anything like that. The first time I've ever gone out in search of Bigfoot or anything. Now, I have been back. I went back to the location and walked down to where I thought we had seen them. And uh, there's some things there. There was uh, a tree placed between two other trees. I looked around, there's no root ball or anything. It was placed there. And uh, I went ahead and left some uh, sardines and apples and stuff like that down there. 
for that night. And I stayed that night. And this was like maybe a couple of months later after we had had that initial sighting. And sure enough, they took the food. And I had cameras up and got no pictures whatsoever. My wife said, well, the coons probably got the food and all that. Well, coons would be on the camera. And they weren't on camera. And one camera had several pictures on it. And then at one point, it took a picture kind of crooked. And then the next picture was back straight. So something moved the camera. But I never got any shot of anything. So that was one trip. I went back again earlier this year. And... At that location, I found several things that piqued my interest. I found several sticks stuck in the ground that shouldn't have been there. They didn't come from any of the trees that were there. And it makes me think they were marking something. And I left food again with cameras. Same situation. Food was taken. No pictures. But I'm pretty sure they're out there. Now, I haven't been back there for a while until about three weeks ago. I went down there and I took my tent out and stayed out there, but basically got no response. I had put the two trees that had the log placed between them where I had put the food before. I found a piece of wood on the ground. I wedged it in that tree up off the ground and put a couple of things on it. Well, next morning I went out there and of course I had a camera on it. The next morning I went out there and that piece of wood that I had wedged in the tree was broken. It was destroyed down on the ground and the food was gone. Nothing on the camera. It was a pretty good sized piece of wood. A field mouse or raccoon or whoever could not have done that so even though i have no proof no pictures or anything like that i'm pretty sure i know what did it but also there's a group of guys over further east in texas over by sam rayburn lake we've been going out over there in the angelina national forest And they've recovered hair and heard howls and all that sort. We haven't actually seen anything yet. Uh, Probably going to try to go out one more time before hunting season or something to uh, try to take a look. And uh, this is something that's going to keep going. I turn 71 tomorrow, but I'm going to keep doing this because I have seen one and I know they're out there. I now have a thermal and night vision, and I have a drone to help look for things when we're out. So this is going to be an ongoing project. I say now, not only am I a believer, I'm a knower, because I have seen one. I know they're out there. I don't know what they are. I can't tell you. We'll call them Bigfoot for now. but. Until someone actually has one, I guess that's all we can do. But my experience is limited, I can tell you. As I say, I've only started this in the last year or so, a couple of years. But I'm going to continue. And I hope everyone will take this into consideration if they have an interest and get out there and do the research help find out what's out there and what we can do. And I guess that's about it. Well, that's it for tonight's show. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let us know. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Seen a bunch of run-down new horse towns Where the church is the backbone, loves and the plow And the five-string melodies groove in with the farmland rose where the roots run deep 
Beyond the noise of the busy streets Where the songs of the south are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah